who who do you want me to introduce the film? Do you want to introduce it? Um yeah, so a bunch of toddlers get sent to World War One um on a Broadway stage. Um and war happens and then it ends. That's all the that's the movie. I fantastic. My, Great film. My God. Hope what? it wins best picture. One, I'll be angry if it wins best best picture. <laughs> you told me Two, I was too harsh. You are being movie. too harsh on it. I will be very mad. I'm not. I I don't think you're being harsh enough. Okay. I don't well, know you, how you feel about it precisely. Like so not. let's let's get our thoughts out there. But first, let me just say, I do know that I let you know that a week or so ago it was 27, uh, not 2017, 20. Uh, God damn it, 1917 was on the IMDb top 200, <laughs> and it was yeah like number 15 or something. Uh, oh and God. I can, can happily report God. that damn. it is now out 15? of 15. I can now happily report uh, that it is out of the top 30. That's why I don't even I don't even check IMDb. I just find it interesting because I feel it's more of a it's a a test Idiots of the site. of the eh, mass audiences are on the site. It's a test, a litmus test of what the audience, the audiences of today are thinking. Yeah, which, you know, well, they're not the thing, wrong. Right, is that I, I saw this movie with my brother, Nick Johnson and Brandon Sanju, and they all thought it was being really harsh on the movie. Um. And I, I just don't see the appeal. I really don't. It is the most by the books war movie presented in the most deceptively shallow way. And I was so bored throughout the first, like, the last hour and a half. I just did not really find interesting at all. All right. So 1917 <laughs> is a pretty engaging <laughs> world war one thriller film that I think really drops the ball when it comes to its characterization and it's, it's actual film making like the narrative of the film, but what does work. And I think what a lot of people has, have latched onto and yeah. what I latched onto is the fact that it's so it's vis viscerally engaging, maybe not for someone like you, but at the very least there is, a, a strong sense of tension and building of tension and stakes throughout the, the film. There is enough characterization that you can get by, although pretty iffy. And that that's my main issue is that I never really got a hold of who our, our two leads were. And then one of them dies and like, cool. See ya. Um, yeah. And then the other guy goes through his entire journey and he gets to the end. I'm like, fun. I guess you you won today. I I, I don't know. Like it, it felt I, it felt empty. The, it was empty spectacle, but the spectacle was really well made. It was yeah on 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 a moment by moment basis. It worked for me, but some of see yeah, I I find it ironic that um you know Martin Scorsese recently called Marvel movies like roller coasters, theme park rides. Mm -hmm. Because this felt like the most roller coastery theme park ride of a movie I've ever been to. And it maybe it was the fact that it was all one take, but it was constantly like, oh, let's walk, let's walk, let's walk. Ooh, boom, explosion. Oh, let's walk. Ooh, dead body. And the camera would like pan over, like, ooh, look how spooky the dead bodies are. And you have these characters who are rushing it you through this story almost like you're on like star tours or something like that and i just i don't know i, I saw through the whole facade and there's certainly the end, a facade thought, okay, to okay that it. was although didn't you you compared it to a theater production in the beginning in your opening summary uh, it. yeah it was it was it was stagey to me but i guess i mean more in a um a roller coaster way than a theatrical way See, the other thing is, is I, I suppose this is a negative. I could not stop thinking about the fact that it was one take and that I, I was. The cuts were so obvious. Yeah, I, I couldn't care less about that. Like that, no okay. one, no one, most audiences don't care about where the cuts yeah. are. And like, if they're obvious or not, who cares? Um, that doesn't affect the actual content of the film. That's just, oh, you noticed. Good for you. Yeah. Um, 
But what bothered me, and this is completely on me, this is not necessarily anything wrong with the film, is I could not just uh-huh. help thinking the entire time of how far has he actually walked if this is actually oh, if this was actually right. one thing. Because it all feels incredibly like close. Like he only walked a yeah. few miles at best. He walked it because you know, this this it's obviously a wide there's a lot of facets to this story and conflict. And when you really think about how I mean He gets through, like, an entire battlefield in literally real time, like, 30 to 45 minutes. And, you know, the World War I is a war that I study more closely than the other wars because I find it interesting. And the actual trenches, again, not that historical accuracy has any uh, uh, sway in a movie for me, but the trenches went on for miles. And it... I... I just wish they did a better job at at least making it look a little bit bigger. I never got the sense that anything else, there was more outside of the frame. Which I think adds to the whole theme park feeling to it. For me, the trench was the most realistic part. And as soon as we got out of there, the the spatial awareness kind of was wonky. Because he's supposed to be walking miles. What was it? Like 13, 7, something? I don't know. But the point was a bit, that, yeah. And then I I do get the sense in retrospect how it can feel a bit like a a roller coaster or like a video not a video game a uh, oh I'd say video game okay maybe a video game where like yeah he they go to the house and they have to clear out the house and complete that task and then he gets on a car and there's a cut scene inside of the the car with the other soldiers and yep. then he has to get out because he mm-hmm. has to why not. Um, and it it's funny because there are these things in video games that are really annoying called quick time events where mm-hmm. like you'll be in a cut scene and then in the middle of a cut scene like someone will jump out at you or you have to push like a boulder and the screen will just say a a like oh, hit right. a, the yeah. button a a bunch of times i just kept thinking about that when the car <laughs> gets stuck in the mud my thumb was like uh hit x please so I would just summarize my thoughts and say that 1917 worked for me as an experience, but not necessarily as much else. And I think that's how it's working for most people, that they, the the shallow yeah. character development and the kind of go here, do that nature of the film is a bit less obvious for them because they are engrossed in the, the stakes. Because it does keep a fair amount of tension going at any moment, and that... That it works. does. I'll admit the the um when they went to the bunkers and the rats and uh, you know tripwire. I thought that was pretty well done for the most part. But again, then when they're escaping, it feels much like a video game where they're like, "Oh, we got to get out." That was like Indiana Jonesy in that way. Yeah. So my least favorite moment of the movie is ironically its most pivotal moment, and it was when the the brother the one of the main characters dies. When Tommen dies? Yeah, when they, they save the guy <laughs> and then he stabs him. Oh. And I'm like, why I thought th- why are you close enough to be stabbed in the first place by someone you just pulled yeah. out of a burning plane? Jesus Christ. Yeah. I Do thought you have the, no I, intelligence? Because the the film showed me up until that point that he as a soldier he had a fair amount of intelligence. Yeah. So it, it's not like a, a a injured man could just pull a knife out and quickly stab you. I, I don't know. Like, it felt completely fabricated yeah. to me. Well, the thing is, I like the idea of that um, because yeah. I do feel like he was a a childishly naive character, but they didn't do a good enough job explaining how naive he was. So it just came off as kind of a, a stupid mistake. Um, I also feel like that scene in particular is kind of an example of how heavy handed the score was. And I felt that entire like death scene. I was just thinking, oh, this is so dramatic, was overly there, so. I don't really remember. Was there music over that? Yes, there are a lot. Okay, well, the, why? The, 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 I don't know. Just cut out the music. I feel exactly. like it'd be a lot more effective if you just cut out the music it would, and it's just the the nature foley in the background. I feel like the entire movie would have been a lot more um, uh, immersive if mm. there was no music and it felt all you heard was war sounds. Perhaps. Um, I do I do think the music was effective, particularly at certain moments in the film. I'd say yeah. the moment that worked the best for me and I thought was the most in- viscerally engaging aspect moment of the film was when uh, he uh he wakes up and he runs out of the 
after he, he was knocked out, right? And he wakes yeah, up yeah. and then he starts running across the ruined city and there's yeah, all these yeah. flares going up and that Roger Deakins uh, yeah, yeah. brings out his A-game. That was That's, utterly that jaw-dropping. Is, that is the only time in the movie where I remembered, oh, it's Roger Deakins. That was so well lit. And that was, I think, the as far as the visuals go, the best part of the movie. Yeah. But my problem with a lot of, again, I understand a spectacle-driven movie, but what bothered me is that the spectacle, I feel like the one-take nature of it detracted more than it actually benefited mm. to the movie. Because, again, I know most people aren't looking for the cuts, and I don't feel like, you know, blatant cuts will alone destroy the movie, but something like Birdman, where I still, to this day, struggle to find the cuts, it definitely helps the whole one take thing feel a lot more unique and a lot more um uh warranted if it is executed that well with a war movie like this when the cuts are so obvious and also let's let's not forget that it literally does cut in the middle of the movie when he gets yeah. knocked out yeah which i'm like okay so then it's not even really a one take movie so w- if it's not executed amazingly again not perfectly it doesn't have to be perfect but it has to be somewhat incredible on its own merit and th- then why are you doing this especially with world war one movies where e- war movies more than any other kind of movies benefit from insane production design and spectacle and the whole time when there's not something it's super interesting happening on the screen like running through a trench or the plane falls down mm-hmm. or that scene that's in the trailers where he's running when everyone's going into battle when that when there's nothing like that happening it's just two characters who aren't very well fleshed out walking from left to right and it's those moments where i'm like why did you need deacons why did you need a one take just do the things that you're doing stick to what works in this story see i thought the the one take really worked at certain points of the film and it didn't work the whole time well, the one take, it's it's so exhausting when it's not working well. Yes, I would agree with you. And the there. parts that do work well, again, like the outside flare scenes, I'm amazed. I think it just could have been handled better. I don't think that the whole concept is flawed from the get go, because I think that the opening 10 minutes I think you really could put worked. that in the poster of this movie. It could have been done better. <laughs> OK, the uh, opening yeah. 25 minutes up until they, they finish cross, crossing the track. I would say so, too. Really worked with- for me. And I think the last, the last part of the film also really worked as a one take for me, but in the middle, it was uneven, the pacing. And I felt that could have just been handled better, but the one take itself really didn't, I felt it it added a lot to the film. And despite some issues when the characterization fell flat and there was literally nothing really much to grab your attention on screen. Uh Uh-huh. That's when it kind of fell fell down for me, but not because yeah. it was on the whole a bad idea. And also, I'd just like to point out that on the whole, I'm a lot more, I'm a lot more critical when it comes to war movies, um, because I have a I have this thing where I feel like war movies have to have a lot more uh, weight on their shoulders as far as portraying these events, and this one did it with a lot of spectacle and a lot of really really just um un underdeveloped anti-war messages that i feel like did more harm than good um i don't know just the whole thing by the end of it i'm just i, I was exhausted i wasn't all that entertained and have I you just seen thinking about the war movies i really like have you seen the grand illusion is that the is that the one take russian movie no the grand illusion uh jean renoir uh World War One movie, very good. It's on this. Is it on this list? If it's not on this list, that's a crime. Um, no, no. Well, okay. Very highly I've recommend. Seen Pads of Glory. I think Grand Illusion is actually maybe like spine number two or three of the Criterion collection. Oh, it's out wow. of print, I think. But oh, it's two. It's two. I just read this thing. Ah. Oh wait, it might even be one. Maybe it might be one. It it's might be a, number one. It's a really good movie. It's for me one of the best World War One movies because it's it's more about the the chivalry, the end of the chivalry, like the the nobility class 
of that happened during World War One. Well, that's what I a return to like yeah, or that's the what, beginning of modern warfare. And well, it's that's very why I find World War One so interesting because like the first year or two of this World War is like nothing but people, the generals learning that you can't fight like you used to, and it's just a matter of throwing a bunch of soldiers into a meat grinder and hoping that the other one one gets overtoppled or whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, not. I, I haven't seen a lot of World War One movies. Mm-hmm. The only one I can really think of off the top of my head that I really enjoyed was Paths of Glory. And I was I had high hopes for this one. And alas. Two and a half out of five. Maybe even a two. Grand Illusion is like the great escape, but for World War One. If that makes sense. Okay. Anyway, nineteen seventeen. The great escape? Yeah, the great it's because it's a it's a, a prison break film, essentially. Not the whole thing, but you th- you mean a man escaped? Oh no, they're okay. No, never mind. You're right. You're right. Do we have a lag between our our audio today? I think we do. Yes, we take, do. You take an extra second to to respond. Interesting. Is it better when I get close to the microphone? I don't know. If I'm being honest, I I definitely noticed there was a lag, but I didn't think it was horrible enough to stop. No, the we've podcast. been getting by. This has worked so far. Yeah. Okay, cool. So 1917, it it's it's a fun movie. I would recommend it just because it, it looks great and it's well executed, but don't expect anything to you know, anything deeper than just a, a roller coaster of a World War One movie. Uh I mean, I can't even say I don't recommend this just because I feel like th- this is the kind of experience that movie theaters are made for. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Don't see it. Dumb. <laughs> Go see Parasite instead. Mm. Or Little Women. Hey, movie lovers. Thanks for watching. I know those are some hot take opinions, so leave a comment below with your own thoughts on the film. Also, at the time of posting this review on our channel, you might have noticed that the channel is in fact brand new. So if you want to help us out, hit the subscribe button below for more controversial opinions, and we hope you have a great movie-filled day.